he's going to have a hard time cutting y'all off if you go 5, 10, 15 minutes. And I'm just in fairness to everyone that signed up to speak tonight, we keep these things moving. I'm going to jump in in case Kevin lets go a little too long. And as he said, if once we've gotten to the whole list of speakers, if people have additional things they want to say, we're going to open it back up. Kevin, thanks. Uh, the first person is Ms. Sandra Jones.
Now, this next area is an area I'm asking our commissioners to address, our county commissioners. Because I received an answer from FERC stating that since there are no federal regulations, local ones could be put into place. I have a copy of that reply for you, and I will send it out tomorrow by email. I've had it for a little while. And I would suggest the easiest way to address this issue would be to pass a regulation that an offset of one and one half times of one and one half times a pipeline's potential impact radius be mandated. This would help save lives and decrease the impact on property. I'm asking this of you because on February the 17th, Kitty Maidens, area manager for this project, called me and after telling me some reroutes I had proposed had been rejected, she stated, and I quote, We've decided it is better to co-locate within the 300-foot quarter and come within 50 feet of homes rather than follow the one you suggested, which would put a 1,000-foot distance between the line and homes. Who are we trying to deal with? I think it's been deception since our first communication from, um, the, concerning this project. Four more minutes, James. Thanks. Pardon? Just one more minute, please. Four more minutes? One more. <laughs> oh, okay. I can talk real fast. Okay. Um, Why well, don't catch my breath before we start? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, there has been deception since our first um, commun since our first communication because I'll just paraphrase here. I can talk faster than I can read. Okay. When we first were contacted by this in the communication, they said they had met with our local elected officials. That was back in July. The truth is our county commissioners learned of this project in October when I spoke to them for the first time. Our state representative learned about it in December for the first time. Okay. Um, we know that they are inking the other deception is that they stated that Next Era and uh, Spectra Energy are doing this project for Florida Power and Light. The interesting thing about that is if you check the New York Stock Exchange for Next Era Energy, you realize that it was Florida Power and Light. Florida Power and Light just changed their name to Next Era Energy in, in May 2010. Um, so it's really, you know, who are you dealing with? You really don't know. All right, furthermore, for numerous reasons, I could ask you to deny this proposal, but I will only make a suggestion of an alternate route. And that suggestion is actually totally environmentally friendly, and it is the perfect solution for spills and leaks. And it is because, as I was doing research, I found out there are methane-eating mussels that live on the Gulf, of, on the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. That's the truth. Let's put it across the Gulf, lay it next to the one that's already owned by Spectrum Williams Company, and um, then we can ask you to let's just feed the mussels. While we continue to listen to Georgia music, please. I have documentation of where Spectra is inking contracts for exportation of um, there. Um, you can just leave this with us. Yeah, can yeah. I just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to leave this. I'm going to give this to you, okay? Because I've got documentation for this. Thank you. Thank you.